and we back now the other day lebron james put together one of his personal best playoff games ever and that's saying a lot because lebron's got a lot of great games but in toronto the guy was literally unstoppable no matter who they threw at him no matter what shot he took it just seemed like it was a guarantee bucket and it was super exciting to watch now that got me thinking back of some of the most exciting playoff moments i've had to experience as a fan so in today's video i'm giving y'all seven most exciting or entertaining moments i got to watch as a fan so this is me you know so you're not gonna see um jordan's shot against the jazz or you're not even gonna see Allen Iverson step over Tyron Lu because I didn't get to watch those live. These are seven live things I got to watch that I experienced that I loved. And this was tough. I had 14. I have 14 things on this list and I narrowed it down to seven. So if y'all want to see in the future the other seven that didn't make the cut, just let me know by leaving a lot of love on this video. All right, let's get to number seven. But first, a word from our sponsor. Yo, Kenny, let's record. Come on. Let's do the show. Let's do the show. What? Let's do the show, man. Let's record the show. On my fault. I'm just, I'm having too much fun over here on this app. What? Hardwood Aminu. What the, what is that? Hardwood Aminu is the perfect NBA app to interact with other NBA fans. There's so much you can do on it. You can live talk to other NBA fans about games that are going on, or you can head over to the NBA quiz section where you can find out if you're really a true NBA fan. But the coolest of all cool things that you can do is become your own personal NBA writer for other fans. Just start a page and blog about anything NBA related you want. In the description of this video and also in the comment section, I left links to the app Haru Aminu. Can't wait to see you there. Number seven is the Bulls versus the Brooklyn Nets game four in 2013. This was definitely one of the most exciting games I've ever had to watch because this game went to triple overtime. First round playoff series, the 4-5 matchup, a triple overtime game in game four. It was super excited. It was back and forth the entire game. But there was one man that we had as a, at the Bulls that led us to victory, and that man was Nate Robinson. Now, Nate had 34 points off our bench, and he was so important because late in that fourth quarter, he went on a personal 12-0 run. He scored 12 straight points for the Bulls to get us back into the game and get us into overtime this was the moment that cemented nate robinson for me as a forever bull whenever i think about nate robinson i'm gonna think about him on the bulls and it was so it was so exciting that the announcer said this we might have to put a statue of this guy outside the building oh, right right next to my door we're getting crazy now. <laughs> now though that is a bit of a stretch that's kind of how it felt this game it seemed like everything the guy threw up was bottoms and we needed that 34 points off our bench to get us out of this game and ultimately get us out of this series in seven now I know we're showing a lot of love to Nate Robinson, but we got to pay respect to ISO Joe. Joe Johnson hit like two shots that we thought as Bulls fans we were safe. And then Joe Johnson hit it. Boom. All right. First overtime. We're going to it. Then boom. Dang. We got a second overtime. So it seems like everything that the Bulls had to throw at them, ISO Joe had a response. And this is kind of where we got to see prime Joe Johnson in the playoffs. It was incredible, incredible game, incredible series. A series that as a Bulls fan, I didn't know if we were going to get out of because we didn't have Derrick Rose. It's not a Derrick Rose year. We had um, we had Kirk Heinrich at our one starter, and again, Nate Robinson backing him up. But it was just a crazy game, and uh, the UC was incredible. The fans were incredible, and it was just one of my favorite Bulls moments in history. Number six, we got 2010 Game 7, Lakers versus Celtics. Now, honestly, this is kind of weird because this is not a specific moment in game that made the list, but after the game. First of all, I want to thank everybody in my hood. Thank the World War Warriors, Rock Fowl, my, my wife, Tim Shell, my family, my kids, everybody. I definitely want to thank my doctor, Dr. Sandy, my, um, my psychiatrist. She really helped me relax a lot. Thank you so much. It's so difficult to play. All now, that was a post-game interview for, obviously, Ron Artest, a.k.a. Metal Rub Peace. Now, this was such a big game for him. He ended up scoring 20 points, 5 steals in a game that Kobe really struggled. Kobe shot 6 for 24 in Game 7. So, he needed his teammates to have his back, and Ron Artest was there like this game seven is what was ron artest's game but the reason i say this moment was so important because it kind of sh uh, shined a light on mental health uh, honestly we know ron artest to kind of be a hothead malice at the palace the elbow to to james harden but in this moment first he thanked the hood 
legendary. But secondly, he thanked his psychiat psychiatrist and his mental doctors for getting him in a state of mind where he can come out and compete. And I thought that was a big step as far as like mental health goes in the NBA. And now we get to the point where like NBA players go to therapy, not not physical therapy, mental therapy. And I I, I don't know if this was jump started by Ron Artest here, but that's the way I saw it. This is the first time I ever really thought about an NBA players mentally. And Ron Artest did that for me, so that's why it was super important. Number five is Dwayne Wade versus the Dallas Mavericks in 2006. Dwayne Wade's first ring, he earned the heck out of this ring. Every ring is earned, but they were down 2-0. They were down 2-0. They were the favorites coming into the series against Dallas. Dallas was the four seed in the West. The Miami Heat were the two seed. And Dwayne Wade and company lose two games at home in the finals and end up winning the game in six. Winning the series in six. And that was basically based off Dwayne Wade. Listen to these numbers here. 42, 36, 43, 26. Those were the four games that they end up winning to close out this series. And he was unstoppable. Like we think about it, we think about players being unstoppable. Like we say LeBron James is not a player in the league that can guard him. Dwayne Wade, these last four games. With the, was the epitome of unstoppable. They threw everything they could at him, and he just torched them. They even let him shoot the three ball, and we know Dwayne Wade not to be an amazing three-point shooter, but he figured out a way to hit the threes, so they had to actually guard him there. And you know what he did when they guarded him there? Blew past them and got to the bucket. Now, this was him going nuts. At the end of the series, he averaged 34.7, 7.8 7 rebounds, 3.8 assists, 2.7 steals. An amazing stat line in a series that looked like it was almost over being down 2-0 at home. They lost two straight games at home, and I just thought it was an amazing time. And again, me being a Dwayne Wade fan, this was one of the most exciting moments in Dwayne Wade's history. But don't worry, Dirk got him back. As we talk about 2011, Miami Heat fans, you may not want to you may not want to listen to this part. But more specifically, I want to talk about game two of the finals, Miami Heat versus the Dallas Mavericks. Halfway through the fourth quarter, the Dallas Mavericks are already down by 15 points. You're up, you're down by 15 points halfway through the fourth quarter. You kind of calling it a wrap. And if they lose this game, they're down 2-0. And the series is probably all but over at this point. You feel me? Going against the almighty Heat that have LeBron, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and others. But you know what the, the Dallas Mavericks did? On the road, came back down by 15 in the last couple minutes of the game. In the finals. I, I, honestly, this is the turning point of the series, right? If they go down, it's over. If they win this game, they stay alive. And that's exactly what they did. Dirk, Jason Terry, and the entire company just come out in the fourth quarter. They defend LeBron pretty well. And they scored the ball. Now, though, again, as I mentioned, I'm a Dwayne Wade fan. I like LeBron James. This is the period of time when we had the big three that the whole world, except for Miami, was rooting against them. And I was a part of that. So when I watched this game where I was close to clicking off and they came back to win, oh, one of my favorite moments. And I'm so happy Dirk ended up getting his ring because, again, in 2006, they were close. They just couldn't pull out. But now they're going against an even better Miami Heat team and they get their revenge. And, well, for Dirk's legacy... It's perfect. Number three is the Ray Allen shot. Yeah. Versus the Spurs. Y'all know exactly what shot I'm talking about. I ain't even got to talk much about it. But I read Ray Allen's book and he said once he threw that shot up, A, he didn't know if his feet were behind the line. Can you imagine if his foot went behind the line, how differently that series could have played out? He said he asked Mike Miller after they were reviewing it, like on the bench, well, my feet, was my feet behind the line? Mike Miller was like, I'm not completely sure, but I think they were. He threw it up without even knowing where he was on the court. And this is a moment, oh, this is what he said in the book, where like, this is a shot that he practiced. He would lay on the floor, get up in a hurry, get the ball and shoot it. Because he knew that some sometime he may need that quick trigger off the floor to shoot the ball. Isn't that crazy? It went in and it saved the series. It saved the series. This is game six, y'all. This is game six. And there are already Miami Heat fans leaving the arena because this was the game clinching or this is the championship clinching game for the Spurs. But instead of that, they go game seven and the Miami Heat win. We got to show a lot of respect to Chris Bosh for getting that rebound. Again, this is a moment that not many people talk about, but Tim Duncan wasn't in that game right there. If Tim Duncan is in that game, maybe Tim Duncan get that rebound. I don't know, man. It's something to think about, but... Chris Bosh gets that rebound and has the awareness to see the greatest, at this point, three-point shooter of all time. Obviously, Steph Curry took that away from him eventually. But at this point, Ray Allen is the greatest three-point shooter of all time. Instead of giving it back to LeBron, who just missed the shot, he sees Ray Allen in the corner. Boom. 
series t series saver series saver in a game seven happened y'all know miami he win that it's just again i wasn't a fan of this heat team but as a fan of basketball you can't do nothing but admire how important or how incredible that moment was for the league number two is their bros game winner gets the Cavs. 2015 baby how can i not put this on this list this was incredible for two reasons obviously we win that game we didn't win the series but we win that game and it brought us the meme of derrick rose not having an expression we know derrick rose kind of an emotionless player seems like and he didn't break that character the crowd is going crazy teammates are going crazy derrick rose stale face game winner we need to come back next game next game lebron hit the game winner so we end up losing this series but it was super fun it was super fun derrick rose not a three-point shooter he ain't called glass but he called game i think that was uh actually paul pierce that said that but nonetheless it was important and it was fun to watch. And number one, it's a shot by Kyrie Irving. Again, I think this is the clutchest shot. I've, this is the clutchest shot I've ever seen. The clutchest shot I've ever seen. It doesn't get bigger than this. A game seven NBA final series, you hit the game winning shot. And right before that, I gotta get respect to LeBron chase down block on Iggy. Of course, that is that is super important too. But the shot though, it's it's incredible, man. It's incredible. That that is a moment that i'm gonna remember forever and everybody should because again in my eyes it was the most important shot i've ever seen hit i've ever seen hit rest in peace and steph curry after that one man came back from a 3-1 deficit win the series lebron gets another ring Kyrie gets his first and Kyrie's like you know what i did my job here it's time for a new journey and now he's in boston and hopefully he'll come back uh next season and help this team win more but those are my seven. Those are my seven most memorable or favorite playoff moments. Again, I got seven other things on this list that I would love to talk about, but we're going to keep it at seven. And if you, if you like this video enough, we'll bring the other seven, the honorable mention seven, in, um, in a future video. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace.